Good evening. Welcome to Aging with Attitude. My name is Alan Levin, and our guest this evening is Caroline Farmer. She's Deputy Director of the North Carolina Department of Justice. Welcome, Caroline, Thank to you. Aging with Attitude. Glad to be here. All right. Glad to have you here. What are we going to talk about this evening? Identity theft and scams. Exciting. Yes. Um, tell me, uh, if you can, about what percentage of the people do you think either in North Carolina or the United States or wherever, whatever kind of base you have, mm -hmm. um, get get taken by these various schemes. Any idea? Uh, the thought is that a third of us are victims really? of identity theft or scams, mm -hmm. yes. Um, and if you think about the numbers of of uh, uh, security breaches that occur where someone's yeah. hacked into a computer and stolen information, that's one way. And then there's just the local stuff where people go into purses and come knocking on doors, going right. through trash. Right, 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 right. Mm -hmm. um, when I first started uh, getting on the internet uh, some years ago, uh, I of course uh, ran into the scheme of somebody in Nigeria who wants to transfer $15 million into my account. Isn't that nice? Uh, of course, I don't fall for that, but uh, I understand that some proportion of people do, and more than that, since that time, those kinds of schemes have grown ever more elaborate. Maybe we can talk about that. I would love to. Um, we, Nigerian um, uh, scams are, are, have been around for years. Yeah. And unfortunately, in North Carolina, we've had a large percentage of the population who still fall for those types of scams. Amazing. It, it is. And, and uh, part of it is they feel like it's a, um, a dream come true, a prayer has been answered, things of that nature, where they really they feel like this windfall They've been asking for it, and it finally came. And so I think that's a l large part of it. And with the economic downturn, we've even had more people falling for it. Uh -huh. So it's it's very unfortunate. One of the most interesting ones that I've seen is not um, I'm in I'm in this other country and I need to get the money out, or I've. Uh, um, I'm, I'm a political refugee and I need to get the money out. Those were the old versions. Right. The more current one was I'm a, I'm a child and my father left me all this money, but my mother is a drug addict and beats me and I need oh to get the gosh. money out of the country. So it, they're oh using the sympathy, I really, really right. must help right. this poor child. Right. And so that's where they're, they're catching people sometimes. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, your colleague uh, David Kirkman was on this program yeah. uh, uh, some time back and uh, yeah, he mentioned um, uh, one, it's not internet, but uh, it's so good that I thought I would uh, share with you. You already know it, but in case uh, some of our viewers didn't see that one. Um, a minister down here will get a call, supposedly from a minister up in Pennsylvania someplace. Yeah. And uh, the minister from Pennsylvania says, uh, good evening, Reverend, you know, Mrs. Uh, Harriet Smith of our congregation is moving down to your area, and uh, she will be in your church Sunday morning, and she's... You know, a blessed, wonderful woman. I just wanted to introduce you in advance. Thank you very much. And then Saturday night at home, the pastor gets a phone call, and it's, guess who? It's Mrs. Harriet Jones. And she had a car breakdown. She's in this garage not very far from here. And uh, it's $1,200 to do a brake job and some other stuff. And they won't take her check. Would it be possible for you to wire her the $1,200, and then she's going to be in the church tomorrow morning, and she'll gladly give you her check. Exactly. And I guess every once in a while, people fall for that. They do. They yeah. do. And, and, and you know what? It, it's a wonderful thing in North Carolina. We are, um, we are a very trusting community, right. and we want to help. And right. that is our weakness. Right. So we do want to help, and we are trusting. Right. Um, when somebody calls up and says that they're the police department on the phone, right. We believe it's the police department. We trust the caller ID. When it says right. it's American Red Cross, right. we think it's the American Red Cross calling. Right. And for free now on the internet, as you were talking about earlier, you can you can actually change my cell phone number to come across on your phone. Really? Your caller ID is anything I want it to be. Oh my so goodness. I can be Mecklenburg, Charlotte, uh, Charlotte Mecklenburg Police Department. I can be. Uh, American Red Cross, I can be um, uh, IRS, mm. I can be any group I want to be, and I can ask for private information from you. Wow. So you can't trust caller ID. And yeah. no matter what, even if you don't have caller ID, you shouldn't be providing anything. Right. It, 
you know, I'll tell you, if the police department calls and they say there's a warrant out for your arrest because you've missed jury duty, they're going to let you call them back. Right, right. You don't have to pay that fine right, right. then and over the phone. You don't have no, to give no. your social. So, oh, my gosh, yeah. But it's, it's, it's amazing because it gets your heart going. I mean, right. I, I was raised, you, you don't miss jury duty. So there's certain things that that really get our heart our heart going, and we uh, right. we think we have to, to to do that. Well, most of us are law-abiding people, basically law-abiding. We we do we do break the law uh, fairly regularly in some areas where it's tacitly accepted. Very few of us drive at the speed limit, for example. I, I just drove here. I would agree with that. <laughs> right, um, but that's sort of that's sort of accepted. Yes. Uh, that kind, because we feel we're not hurting anybody, mm -hmm. we're not stealing anything from anybody. Mm -hmm. uh, but when it comes to taking money or something like that, uh, that's when our law-abiding instincts uh, seem to kick in for most people. But for some certain proportion of people, psychopaths, sociopaths, that's the very attraction yeah. of these schemes to kind of get something for nothing, right. to kind of defy the law, to break the law. And there's so many ways that they find to do it. And it's more um, profitable than it used to be. It is more profitable, mm -hmm. I would imagine, yeah. And I, I, partly, I, I would guess, because the bad guys are getting so good at it. Yeah, they are. Uh, they send you uh, very official-looking things by email, and it's from your bank. And the bank is telling you in the email, um, uh, Mr. Eleven, um, something bad has happened to your account, and uh, we need you to call this number immediately and verify, blah, 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 blah. And, you know, that's scary for a lot of people to it get. Is. And the logo is the says Bank of America, whatever it is, and, and everything looks so legit, you know. Yeah, and they used to be misspelled, and right. now they're not even misspelled anymore. That's right. They, they, they really look good. Right, they're just getting better and better. Right. At what they do, that's yeah. fantastic. Well, I, my general rule of thumb when it comes to email is I don't, I don't trust. Uh, those are phishing emails, the right. PHIS right, right. Um, uh, emails that you were talking about. But I don't even trust any email that right. has a link in it. Right, right. Because you know, what if it's oh, there's a great sale right. at Belks. Right, picking right. on Belks, but um, just because it's a, a well-known store. But you know, it, and if you clicked on the link, you could either download spyware. Right. Or you could um, go to a site that's not really the store site right. and um, make purchases that really aren't making purchases. You're providing your private information. Right. How so, interesting. So I never, you know, if there's a sale, you can go directly to the website yourself that you type right. and, and, and get that information rather than following the link in the email. Right. You know, a couple of my friends have had some um, fairly benign scams work. I said fairly benign mm -hmm. because... Uh, it's not costing them any money. Uh, what happens is somebody uh, hacked into their address book, and um, now everybody that knows them gets this from Caroline Farmer, uh -huh. your friend, uh -huh. and uh, all it is is a link. And so you click on the link because you know Caroline, right. and what you get is you get commercials for Viagra, Cialis, mm -hmm. or, or stuff like mm -hmm. that. I've had two of my friends uh, have that happen, but they say it didn't cost them any money so far. Right. Well, what I've, um, along those lines right. is uh, emails being taken, taken over and even Facebook accounts, yeah. the social networking Facebook, um, where they take it over and they send it to everybody who's in the contact folder or right. friends and it says I'm in London right I've had you know my wallet has been stolen and I need money wired to me so that I can get home right. and nobody ever checks to find out that they're actually sitting at home right 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 right. and it happens and in fact it happened to a, a pastor in uh, in Raleigh right and thankfully a lot of the people called the church to see right. how they could help rather than following the directions oh, in that email very good. yes yeah. So. Actually, I had that happen to me. As somebody I knew um, supposedly sent me an email, and she was uh, stuck in London and needed money desperately. And right. please, could I send her? Blah, 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 blah. Right. And I knew, knowing this woman, I know there's no way she's ever going to be in London. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. The, the more people you know the, uh, mm. about this, the, the better off you are. What I find interesting is that a lot of those scams, right. um, they have a success rate because they're sending it out to everybody. Right. And a lot of them you're, you're looking at, they'll, they'll say, you know, what, click on this link, look at my new photos. Right, right, right. Well, I, I've had one from a, a state senator, and I'm like, 
you know, I know the state senator, but I don't know him well enough to look at his photos. Right, so I'm right. going to say that this is a scam. Right. But right. if it came from my sister-in-law, right. well, I see pictures of How the kids. How would you know? Exactly. So that's where you have to get cautious, and you really shouldn't click on any links right. in the email. So right. I would rather go ahead and type the, the website address yourself to make sure. Good point, because I have clicked uh, on a couple of those links, supposedly. I, I, I knew it was a scam, but I was just curious what they were selling. Right. Maybe I shouldn't do that. It, 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 it's not worth the risk. No, no. It, and it's, it, it is interesting sometimes to see what they're up to. But, That's right, right. Um, yeah. It's not worth the risk. Although uh, I have Norton, and um, uh, the one time I did uh, click on a link and Norton just... <laughs> Just shut it right down on me. Well, that's good. They uh, they got, they had the message before I did. So. That's that's a wonderful thing. You know, yeah. um, you want to make sure that uh, your virus protection is up to date, your spyware right. is up to date, right. and um, also that you have a firewall installed. Yeah. And a lot of people have wireless now, and so at their homes, mm -hmm. so they can move around, right. and that's um, another level that people don't install them appropriately and get the encryption going. Right. So right. Um, if they follow the directions, change the password so they're not the standard password, right. that helps a great deal. Right, right. So. Yeah, I, I would imagine varying uh, passwords. I don't know how many passwords I have. There are so many things. But uh, I, I guess that, in, you know, being lazy, I tend to use the same one yeah. over and over again. Yeah. But maybe that's not such a smart idea. Well, it, it depends. I, um, I've, I've heard um, different theories from different folks, right. and I don't know what the answer is, but I've heard people who, um, who have, uh, depending upon the security level that's needed, they have varying passwords. You know, right. financial would be the highest password, sure. and social would be the lower password, right, and right. so forth. So they have varied it that way. I've had people who, who use the same password and put different numbers at the end. Right. And so it just depends. Um, I don't think that there's a, a common thing. They, I, I do know it helps. It, the longer the password, the more variety, capital letters, and so mm. forth, numbers, uh, alpha and, and numeric, and right. um, that tends to help a great deal. Right. Um, Microsoft is one of the more common um, software companies, yeah. and they provide advice on that on their website as well. Yeah, that sounds like a good idea, what you mentioned before, that, that the more serious, the more damaging a hack-in would be, mm -hmm. maybe the more complicated you make the password mm -hmm. so that your bank is the most complicated and, you know. And, right. Although and don't do what a friend, one of my coworkers did. She, uh, um, she uh, put a sticky note on her debit card for access to her bank. Right. And because she couldn't remember the number and right. the access. So she taped, uh, she put it on a sticky note and taped it to her debit card and then her wallet was stolen. Oh my goodness. So you, you, that's not a good way to do it. Figure out another system, but right. that's not a good way to do it. That is so frightening, the thought of having your wallet sold. And it's not that I carry so much money, but when I think of all those credit cards and everything in there and all those IDs, that, but what I, I did do a good thing. Mm -hmm. I sat down once and I took every one of those things out of my wallet. I sat in front of the, cube, the computer and I opened up a little thing and I entered all those numbers and then names and telephone numbers and you know everything that I would need to know in case somebody did steal my wallet. I could, I wouldn't have to panic. I could go right on the air and just start dialing numbers. Cancel, 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 cancel. Oh, that's great. So I did do something useful there, which I recommend to other people too. Yeah. Generally, I recommend um, um, limiting the number of credit cards you carry around with you. Right. Um, I would always carry uh, two forms, not just credit card, but a, another. Yeah. either a debit card or another form because occasionally um, you don't know that your credit card has been breached and right. then all of a sudden you're cut off. Right. And if you're traveling and your credit card has been cut off, that is not a fun time to go without another credit card. My goodness, yeah. So it's always wise to have two forms with you. But making copies and leaving it in a place or with a person that you trust, like for me, right. when I travel, I give it to my father. Right. I can call him. He's got the contact information because he has the Xerox of the of the cards mm -hmm. with the numbers sure. and the and the one eight hundred numbers. Right. So he makes those calls for me. And also, if you're traveling, to notify the credit card company. So that really? they know, you know, I'm going to be, well, if, you, if especially most of us tend to stay in the same areas and then all mm. of a sudden we travel and we go somewhere else, it's a, a change of behavior. Yeah. So it's helpful if the credit card company knows. And then that also, when, when there's other purchases going on in Texas and you're in New, New Jersey, that's a, right. that's a right. clue that they might want to straighten this out. Right, right. So um, right. it's always a good thing to do. 
I, I like to um, also tell people when there's a lot of confusion about what the safest way to pay for things is because there's cash, there's check, there's debit, and there's credit. Well, cash, if somebody steals it, you don't get that money back. Nobody gives it back. Check, if you use checks and somebody steals your checks, it is your contract relationship with your bank that puts that money back in there and you have to catch it within a certain number of days. Debit card is like a check. A debit or credit um, uh, check card, they're like a debit um, card. The yeah. Debit card. They, yeah. they, different people call them different things. Um, it falls under the check unless it has one of those credit card logos, you know, Visa or MasterCard right. logo on right. your, your ATM or your debit right. card. Um, if that's the case and they steal it and use it as a credit card without the PIN, right. then it falls under the credit card protection mm -hmm. and there's a $50 maximum liability that you would owe if somebody steals your credit card and right. that's a federal law. So if you're going to go out shopping, if you're at a restaurant and you know they bring you that black plastic with a piece of paper on it, right. it is safer to put a credit card on that than right. to put anything else right. because you're letting it out of your control. Right. So you want to make sure that if it's going to get stolen, you want it to be a credit card because then you have 30 days, you get that, that bill from the credit card company and right. you're going to say, that's not mine, I'm not going to pay for it. Right. If it was a debit card that you were paying with, and somebody steals it and uses it, right. that money's already out of your checking account. Mm. And I don't know about you, but I, I would be bouncing some checks if things right. didn't, or wasn't, if the money wasn't sure. in there and somebody else was using my, my, um, right. my account. Sure. So it's always safer to use a, a, a pure credit card. And also with a credit card, your liability is limited to 50 bucks. Exactly. Right. Mm -hmm. so. And I understand a lot of the credit companies uh, won't even charge you the, the 50. Exactly. If you, uh, you know, because, you know, your business, you know, is more important to them than the 50 bucks. Exactly. So, yeah. They have the right to charge 50, but most of them do not. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, but that's on the existing lines of credit. That's, you know, the, the, the if you think of, uh, of thieves, they mm -hmm. go after existing or they go after your private information and try to create new right. credit in your name. So we have existing right. and new. So for the existing, you really do have to monitor. There's safer ways to handle certain things. Right. Um, for new credit, I always recommend people watching over their credit reports with the credit bureaus. Yeah. Um, I, what I found is that uh, a, when annual credit report came out, um, a lot of people went and got their free credit report and then they never went back. Right. And what I like to do, I, I don't know about you, but um, I, I can't remember things. I have to put it on the calendar. If I don't put it on the calendar, I will not remember to change right. the air filter at the house and give the pets their medicine right, and so forth. Right, right. So I have it on the calendar to go to that annualcreditreport.com hmm. and to go and request my credit report. And I put it down three times during the year. So that way, like in January, I would go to annual credit report and request Equifax. Yeah. I would go four months later, I'd have it on my calendar to go to annual credit report and request the one from Experian, yeah. go back to annual credit report and request the one from TransUnion. Mm. That way for free, during the whole year, I'm monitoring new credit in my name. Right. So I really do recommend that people keep an eye on the new credit. That sounds like a great idea. It really, it really does. Yeah, it just... Now you're always you're always checking just in case anything, no matter when in the course of the year it could happen. Yeah. And uh, and these things are free. Yes, yeah. they are. It's it's free. And the one thing I will tell you is that uh, when my father first went, he called me up and he goes, "They're asking for my social security number. I'm not going to give it to them." Which I said, "Dad, great initial reaction." Right. But you gotta. Right. Your file. My dad's name is Bob Farmer. Oh, Think yeah. about how many Bob Farmers there are in the state of North Carolina. About as many as Joe Smith. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> so I'm like, you can't request a, a credit report based on your name. Right. That's just too popular. You right. have to have an right. independent, right. separate thing, which is right. your Social Security number. All right. So right. they've already got it. It's not like you're giving it to them. They've right. had it for years. Right. Right. So. You know, I um, you mentioned something before that triggered a memory of um, somebody else I interviewed, um, a couple of years ago who mentioned this sounds like incredible to me but I guess people can do it you go to the doctor mm -hmm. and you're checking in at reception and she asks you for your Medicare card and your Medigap card whatever if you happen to have one mm -hmm. 
and you pull it out, and the person behind you has a cell phone. Yes. And they just are kind of casually holding it up like this. Mm -hmm. And what they're doing is they're filming your Medicare card yes. with your social security number, your name, everything. Can, that's it could on be there. your credit card, same right. thing. Same thing, right. Yes. I mean, if you're at a store and you're waiting to make a purchase and you've right. got your credit card in your hand, yeah. Yeah. the person 10 feet back, giving you plenty of room, may be actually filming right. to, to, to take a picture of your, uh, yeah. your credit card number. But you might be a little bit more alert in a store pulling out your credit card. I mean, you might, might have a tendency to look around and see who's looking. But, you know, when you're going into the reception and see your doctor's office, is there any place where you could possibly feel safer than this? And so, of course, you, just, you, know, yes. you well, show it and you don't the, pay any attention. Exactly. It makes me think of you know, uh, is when it, you were in school and somebody would cheat off, you would try to cheat off your page. That's right. And you got in that habit of sort of hunching and That's trying right. to hide. Exactly. That's right. And so what I encourage people to do is to put a thumb over the vital information. Right. Whenever you're pulling out any kind of pro checks, right. credit cards, social security number, right. put that thumb over it so yeah. that it's not... You don't because we don't we don't know where the technology is going to come from next. Right. So goodness. that way you're covered. Yeah, it's just amazing what's happening and just all of this technology that's coming out with the iPads and the phones and yeah. the tweeters and all this kind of stuff. And you now you're wondering what what what's going to be in the next ten years? Is all this stuff going to be obsolete? Are they going to plant a chip in your brain? Will be able to communicate chip to chip or something like that? I hope not. <laughs> I hope not too. I like to keep some thoughts private anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but they'd have to have a nice filter system if that's there. The you, go. there you go. Um, no, people would know how, what a sweet tooth I really have if that was that's the case. Because right. I would. Well, be... you don't look like you have a sweet oh, tooth. Oh, I do. A deep, a deep dark one. Oh really? I love my sweets. Um, but. Um, one of the things you were talking about with that, with the social security number, yeah. is um, I encourage people not to carry it on a regular basis. Right. A lot of people, we kind of got raised the way you're supposed to carry your social security right, card right, right. on a day-to-day -day basis, and I really, on a, I would encourage you not to. Now I know the Medicare number is frequently the social security number for people. Yeah. It is um, a hard piece of advice to take, but. Unless you're going to the doctor that day, I generally tell people not to carry the original card, yeah. but instead to make a Xerox of it front and back, right. and then blacken out whatever portion of the number they've memorized. Uh -huh. So if it's the last four digits or the first three or whatever, right, right, right. they blacken that out, and so they're not walking around with a full Social Security number in their right. wallet. Right. And then on the days that they know they're going to the doctor, you take the original card with you but not to carry it on a day-to-day -day basis. Some, uh, some medical offices I go to, they take your two cards and they make photocopies of it mm -hmm. right then and there. Mm -hmm. So they want all the information. They do. Um, and you'll find that they're going to start taking picture, uh, uh, either taking photos of you yeah. as the person who's receiving services, or they're going to take pictures, uh, uh, Xerox of your driver's license yeah. number. Because what we're finding is that there are people who use our information to get mm -hmm. services and if they have a photograph then they know wait a minute I've had this Caroline farmer come in before who looks completely different right. than this Caroline farmer right. Right. I'm not going to trust the information I have right. on the previous file right. I'm going to get a whole nother set because I don't want to give blood information you know uh, 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 whatever might whatever. cause health problems right. um, based on that previous uh, yeah. information so it's, it's it's for your own protection when they do that right right yeah. um, we've got um, about three or four minutes left I, I, I want we, we've been covering prevention here and there mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, as things have come up and you just mentioned one one good idea um, is there any overall kind of schema or plan that you have to to pass on to viewers about how they might do the best uh, in the area of preventing identity theft and scams and phishing being the victim of, of all of these things that we've been talking about. Any general sets of rules? Well, there's always the trust but verify. I mean, right. if you think that it's police officer calling you, gather information for them, hang up the phone, go look up the number yourself, right. verify. Right. Right. If right. you think it's the hospital calling, call them back at a number you look up yourself. Um, verify right. and on the um, on the stuff that you don't have control over the the you don't know when somebody's broken into um, a, a, a business and stolen your social security number. Think about all the different places your social security number is located. Sure, you don't know when those 
that, that theft is occurring. Right. I would encourage people to get a security freeze, and it's free in North Carolina. And what that does is it puts a lock on your credit report for new credit. So even if thief has your social, you can't stop that. You don't know where they're breaking in right, right. now. You don't know what, that when they've got when they've gotten it. But what you can do is, what is the thief going to use your social security number for? A lot of times, it's to get access to money. Right. Access to money is through the credit bureaus, and by locking that door with a security freeze, they're going to be rejected. Now, when you need new credit, it takes 15 minutes for you to unlock that door. But most of us don't get new credit that often. We don't get new credit cards or new loans that frequently. So why leave that door open all the time and be vulnerable? Lock it down and then only unlock it the rare times you need it. I had never heard of a security freeze before. Yeah. It's, that sounds like a very good idea. If you go to our website, the ncdoj.gov, yeah. Yeah. that is a very, uh, we've got information about this free security freeze on there. Right, You right. can um, you find it, uh, there's a lot of entities out there who have been recommending it, but in North Carolina it's free. Yeah. In a lot of states there's been charges associated with it, but in our state it's free. Gee, that's very good to know. Thank you. Okay, security freeze, mm -hmm. uh, call back. Any other general things to do? Um, I would just think about uh, where, uh, when somebody comes to the door. Um, I, I don't really like to open up my front door when they come to the door. If mm -hmm. you're going to get a, a, um, um, a quote <clears throat> for uh, mm -hmm. services, get three. And also, ask for their insurance call and verify right. that they actually have insurance. Don't just trust, you know, are you licensed and bonded? Great. Verify. There's just that one little step will make things go so much easier down the road. Right. We've just got a few seconds left. I, I want to throw in one last uh, thought about, you, you mentioned before about using the credit card as preferable mm -hmm. because liability is limited and so forth. Exactly. Um, somebody else uh, uh, told me that um, his, his strategy is that uh, he will never use his debit card um, if there's any chance that it will disappear from view. Yes. I have to stop right there. I'm sorry. Um, thank you for listening and watching. Our guest this evening on Aging with Attitude has been Caroline Farmer. She is Deputy Director of the North Carolina Department of Justice. Caroline has been giving us a lot of useful tips on how to avoid being a victim of a whole big bunch of very nasty scams. We air the second and third Saturday evening of the month at 8.30 p.m. You take care of yourself.